Welcome back to Bookstream for Tweens with the Fulton County Library System. My name is Miss Leanna and I'm a librarian here at the Milton Library. Thank you guys so much for coming back to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're not already. Um, so today I have a great book that I'm talking to you guys about and it is A Whale of the Wild by Roseanne Perry. Um, and this is a great, great novel. Um, it is told um, from the perspective of a young um, orca or killer whale and her brother. So it alternates. Um, the two of them, um, they get separated from their family and they have to um, try to make it back. Um, and on top of that, they're hungry, they're looking for food, they haven't been able to find their main food source in a while, which is salmon. Um, so they have a little bit of a struggle. So I will read from chapter one with you guys real quick. Um, and let's do that. Chapter one, kinship. In the early morning before the wind of the day wakes up, before the push of the tide changes to the pole, there is nothing to stir in the mist that floats above the water, nothing but me. My family is sleeping, all rising and breathing together after a weary night of searching for and not finding salmon. I swim beside them and roll belly up just below the surface. Each beat of my fluke makes a ring of ripples in the still water. The ripples nudge against the mist. It swirls up and away from my path as if I am some giant thing, a rising tide, a storm wind. I am not so big, not yet. For now, I am just a daughter, not strong enough to be a savvy hunter like mother. Not wise enough to be a master wayfinder like great mother. I'm not old enough to be a mother like my cousin, Akila, And not young enough to delight my family like the younglings do. Their games and sweet chirping voices. They say I will be a brilliant wayfinder someday, but I cannot imagine them following me. When I am dancing with the mist of early morning, I do not care. I roll again and let my fin break through the skin of the sea and split the fog in two. I huff a great cha out of the breather on the top of my head. The sun lifts above the ridge of the mountains, casting a golden glow across the Salish Sea. I turn downward, darkward, gathering speed, and then lift my head skyward. I beat my flukes hard against the grip of the earth and the weight of the water, tucking my flippers close to my sides. I burst into the air and imagine myself turning into a raven and soaring among the clouds. I arch over and hit the water with a satisfying smack and a happy fizz of bubbles. When I rise to the surface again, Great Mother is there watching me. Beauty is the food of the mind, she says. Wayfinders are like this. They say nonsensical things. I was trying to forget about food. I was hoping to want it less. But now Great Mother has reminded me and my hunger comes roaring back like a winter storm. Eat a little beauty every day, my Vega, my bright star, Great Mother says. She comes over to nuzzle me. It will give you strength. That makes no sense at all, is the thing I do not say out loud. Nobody questions the Wayfinder. We follow always. But while the rest of my family is waking up, I chase the last whips of fog and bite into them, just in case. There are nothing but a drizzle of rain on my tongue. We gather around mother and great mother, shaking off sleep, ready to follow them. Our chinooks will return to us, great mother says firmly. They have, they always have, since a time of ice. She leads us on, choosing a path around the islands and inlets of our home waters. Mother travels shoulder to shoulder with her. Mother is the wisest of hunters. If she cannot find her salmon, no one can. And none of us needs our salmon more. Her belly is broader every day. When I make a click stream, I can see the shape of my soon to be born sister inside her. It has been a hard year, a lean year, but babies are always good luck. And she is the sister I've been waiting for my whole life. We fall into our usual places. Great mother leads us. Mother nudges the younglings, Deneb and Altair, to the middle where they can be well looked after. Uncle Regal swims on one side of them, Akila on the other. 
I do not have a particular spot, so I tag along behind where I can see and hear everybody, but they will not pay attention to me. We are a thing to see when we travel. One fin after another cuts through the water, rising like an ocean wave, fast and sleek and strong. Sharks hide from the shadows when we come around. Eels slide further into their caves. Gulls scatter. Seals watch us from their resting spots with wide brown eyes. All day long, Mother sends her click stream into shadows and under stone arches. She circles underwater, rock spires, and forest covered islands, looking for our salmon. We all search. The sea is full of fish, but none are big enough, needy enough, rich enough. None are salmon. Pole changes over to push. The younglings are ready to eat anything that moves. Fish, fish, fish. Altair chants while Deneb flushes out one of the spiky fellows hiding in the rocks. I have already learned my lesson about those. I am not surprised a moment later to see the youngling boys spitting out the pointy bits and finding not much left to swallow. I cannot blame them. Another long day of hunting, another day of hunger. The sun is going down by the time we come across a less rocky spot with a smooth bottom. I spy a pair of eyes in the mud, blinking. I stop my bubble stream and draw in a mouthful of water. You can never tell how big a fish is from the size of its eyes. In my imagination, this one is big enough to feed us all. I squirt the mud out of my mouth. It lifts the fish from the mud, and in one snap I have him. I crunch down until I hear the middle bone crack. Every fish has a middle bone, and when you break it, they stop fighting. I shake off the mud and sand. It is small, barely a mouthful. I blow out a big, sad bubble and rise for breath. Deneb spies my catch first, and Altair is right beside him. Share, share. These are the first words a baby learns. We alone among the creatures of the sea share our food. My clever Vega mother says, always noticing the little things. It takes a sharp eye to find a flatfish. We all know that flatfish are flavorless. Not quite as unsatisfying as eating cogs, but almost. Only a little one, I say. I offer her the first bite. She shares her half, so I do the same. The piece I'm left with is hardly worth swallowing. I wish I had given the whole thing to mother. She eats every mouthful she can get. I look through Mother's belly to see the curled shape of my baby sister. She's growing just as she should, Mother says, I promise. It is not kind to look through someone, but I cannot stop checking on Capella. I rub my head ever so gently across the stretched skin of Mother's belly. A sister, a sister of my own. Someone to love and look after. Someone to swim at my side and share the work of a wayfinder. Great Mother takes us out of the shallow and silty inlet to a place where the island is steep-sided and rocky. The push is stronger here. We rest and let it carry us along. There is a cave at the waterline that I remember from the last time we came this way. I move closer and just like last time, there is a mother seal and her baby asleep inside. Another seal is floating just outside the cave, crunching through the skin of one of the spiny fishes without a flinch. Maybe it would not be so bad to eat a prickly one. I am hungry enough to try. I duck under the water and send out a clip, click stream. I wait for the echo of my clicks to return, tilting my chin up to catch even the faintest sound. My clicks show me the cracks and crevices where fish like to hide, as if sunlight could reach there. I see a few of the prickly fellows and then a big flash of silver. I quick turn, click stream again. Yes, oh yes, a smooth sides, all speckled gray, a hooked mouth and fast, a salmon, a silver. I search forward, and it swerves towards a rock, looking for a niche too narrow for my teeth to follow. I keep after it, and it zigzags up the face of the cliff. It jumps into the air. I scrape my side on the rocks in pursuit. I can taste it already. I snap and miss. It jumps again. I gather my strength and leap. I cannot quite grab it from the air, but with a swing of my head, I knock it against the side of a cliff. It falls back into the water, stunned. I grab it pushing my teeth deep into its meaty size, a salmon at last. So that um, just gives us a, a, a little um, peek into um, Vega's world um, where she is hunting for salmon with her family. They're having struggles um, finding enough food for everyone. Um, but I really love this book. Um, there's throughout the book, there's a lot of illustrations. So the cover is really cool. Um, and then there's illustrations throughout the book, and I will show you one that we passed. And this is 
an illustration of the family that Vega is re referring to at one point in the book. Um, so the one thing I will say about this book is that um, the illustrations kind of take over the text in a lot of areas, um, meaning the, the dark water um, tones um, like lead into the words, um, which is artistically really cool. Um, I like that, but it is, it does make it more difficult to read. So just keep that in mind. Um, I did check on the ebook edition of this, and in that edition, the, um, the text is unbothered by the illustrations, so it will be um, easy to read as a normal book um, if you want to get the ebook. Um, so you can borrow that with Libby by Overdrive. You can place a hold. There's the audiobook version and then the ebook as well. So the ebook is cool because you can still see the, the illustrations that are throughout the book, which is cool. Um, so this is A Whale of the Wild. Thank you guys so much for joining Fulton County Library System's Bookstream for Tweens. We'll be back tomorrow with another video and we're going to be discussing the author, Roseanne Perry who has some great books out there that we will talk about more. Okay, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.